listen, when, when, when you break down RDA, I mean, that, that guy, he doesn't have very many, uh, very many holes in the armor, if you will. There's not a lot of footage that you can go watch and, and see some weaknesses, but I trust that you are. Tell me, how do you beat RDA? You hit that same sweet spot on the chin that everybody else does, man. I know I can hit him straight in the face, but he's got that sweet spot. And me, I'm very technical, I'm very precise, and my timing and everything is great. And my hands are hard, man. I hit hard. I got hands of stone, bro. I'm the new Roberto Duran out here. I'm the new age Johnny Cage. And that dude has got absolutely fucking nothing for me on November 5th. Once I touch that chin, it's night-night RDA. Please keep going. You are on fire. Please keep. You are on fire, my friend. I don't even know who that Cage guy was, but I love the rhyme. Man, it's it's always on, man. This is it. I, I'm so hyped up right now. It's not even funny. I'm tired of all the pansies out there, all the BS and all the talk. It's time for me to go out there and prove to everybody that I am the real deal man out there. Hey, uh, tell me this. When you look at your division, so you got Connor taking on uh, Eddie Alvarez the same night, right? You're, you're, you're going to fight, and they're going to be up an hour later. How do you see that contest going? I could give a shit, man. Honestly, it's a shit show. All that talk and all that BS, honestly, if he wants to come in this division, I'm welcoming everybody because I'm taking on all comers. Once I'm done with this division, I'll go to 145. I'll handle business there, and I'll jump up back up to 170. And I'll handle everybody like I knocked everybody out at 170 on the Ultimate Fighter show. I'll walk around at 200 pounds, Chael. And once I'm done at 170, I'll bump up to 185 and I'll handle business there, too. Wow. I didn't know you were walking that big. How do you get down to 155? I'll walk around at 205, honestly. And you know what? It's an easy cut for me because I'm a wrestler. I'm a badass wrestler, too. And I got over 20 years' experience with this stuff. So it's a piece of cake for me. Wow. So, so tell me, in that, in that division, though, like, as you're looking for, because I have to imagine whoever comes out of that fight, you and RDA, I gotta, I have to assume is gonna be fighting for the strap. Do you think you're gonna be fighting with Eddie or Connor? Do you, do you have, do you, how do you see that fight going? Well, I don't want to rob Khabib an ass whooping, honestly, because that dude really deserves it. You know, and if Michael Johnson doesn't handle it, I'm gonna have to go after that asshole. Because, man, that dude's put a damper in my mood and put a bad taste in my mouth. I want to clean that shit up. What happened there? What happened between you and Khabib? Because that that really blew up. That dude's a dirty Q-tip, man. He needs to change his hat, bro. That his whole entire show is a shit show too. You know, he's got his fans fighting his battles and and this and that. But honestly, he can take his fake belt anytime he wants to and put it up against my 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 county belt. And I tell you what, I'll go every single time. I will finish that dude. That dude almost got finished by Nate Orchard. Hey, nothing bad with that one, man. But uh, or but. Just for me, man, it's just, it's just bullshit, man. I just want to handle this business. With RDA in the mix, you have Eddie Alvarez, you have Khabib Nurmagomedov, and now you want to add McNuggets to the mix. This is great. I can give a shit who has that belt. When it's my time, they're going to be the lucky one to draw that lucky lotto number, man. It's going to be really fun for me and not so much for them. Hey, it's going to be fun for us all. I, I love it, and you're firing me up on it. Uh, I, I just, I got it. I got to know this. So uh, t- you take Eddie Alvarez, okay? You make this fight with Connor that a lot of people uh, didn't see coming, and now you've got Aldo so mad that that fight's happening as opposed to himself in the mix somewhere that he wants his release from the company. Is Aldo misplacing his frustration? I mean, th- this is ridiculous what Aldo is doing, right? You can't just not get the fight you want, take your ball, and go home, can you? I don't know. He's a quitter. That dude's a quitter, man. If you're a quitter like that, you don't belong in this division. You don't belong in this UFC, the elite, the ones that we're fighting around here in the mouth, the best in around the world. If you want to go to a different place, you want to go have fun and do that, that's cool. For me, I belong here. I started in the mail room. So I started like almost like a CEO position where I worked my way up to the positions where I'm at right now. Man, I tell you what, if you have to deal with all the bullshit, it's just business, man. But if you don't have the backbone, to stand up and stand tall and deal with the bullshit and push forward, you're not going to make it anywhere else. You're a fucking quitter. Wow. Well, I guess I guess there it is. I mean, Aldo went as far, Tony. I, I know you're up there at Big Bear, so I don't know if you saw this news. Aldo went as far as saying, if the UFC won't release me, I will take a dive in, in the rest of my fights that I've got with them to fulfill my contract. Now, that's a big problem from a from a, a standpoint that there is gaming on these fights. When you have an athlete saying, I will take a dive, that you got a problem. Well, there's a problem with the company, too, man. The UFC lost its integrity. You're letting these fighters control the outcome of absolutely everything. You're letting McNuggets. And one thing I have to tell you, we have the same management. So this is the biggest problem, Chael. Anytime I say that I was going to call up my shots, even buy a Darce for Mike Rio, my management went and told Connor to go and said, Hey, the next interview, I tell you what, 
why don't you tell him to fucking predict your fight? And that way, you know what? It, it'll come back towards you, and you'll be great. And here's the other thing. The dude stole all my quotes, bro. So, Tony, t- tell me what you mean by that. So, Connor stole your lines. You guys have the same management. Is that a problem? Is there is there a conflict of interest there? What, what, what exactly What's do you mean? It's a huge conflict of interest now since we're in the weight class now. It's a huge. Don't you think so? I would think so. I mean, if you're going to try to like hold one that's going to be your money maker, you would want to keep them there. And my, my direct quote when I fought Abel Trujillo before even McNugget stepped in the picture was, I don't look past my opponents. I look through them. Look on the timeline, check that shit out, and get back to me. Wow. Wow, I didn't know that. Hey, listen, I know he's a rip-off artist, man. I've, I, I've had plenty of my stuff ripped off by him, too. He goes out and performs it, and and he does. I didn't know that, though. So, I mean, what do you do? So you're managed by Audi. He's managed by Audi. I didn't I didn't realize that. So, yeah, I, I guess you make a fair point. If he is the guy on top of the bill and now he moves into the weight class, politically, do you have a problem? I don't know. I guess, that's for, I guess that's for you to decide, but I see your point. Well, I guess the biggest issue is funny, actually. Me and Bisping were actually sitting in the office one time, and it was funny because Bisping was one of the first guys to get signed by them. And then here I come in there, and we're ultimate fighters. You know, you had Uriah Hall and all these other guys. And then all of a sudden, you had McNuggets here, and then all of a sudden, all the pictures in the whole entire place changed. Interesting, bro. And then I hear from Bisping, he's like, fuck this. My picture was up on the wall all the time, and now I got fucking caught over here. It's interesting, bro. When new energy comes around, people change like chameleons, man. Their colors change faster than them. Wow. Awesome. I love that shit. I stay true to myself, man. Screw all that other stuff. I was on a stage one time doing a Q&A in England, and I, I was out there to corner Luke Barnard. He was getting ready to fight. And so I, I do the Q&A, and during the Q&A, uh, Michael Bisping and Conor McGregor come out. So now it's the three of us doing it. But I don't know they're coming. They're they're in on the gag. I'm not. You, you do the best Q&As, by the way. I appreciate I that. I mean, far and away. The, the best Q&As. Connor was just coming out at that point, though. I don't even know if he had had a main card fight. You know, if you'll remember, Connor McGregor became a star overnight. He had one fight. It was an undercard. He knocked the guy out. He grabbed the mic. He lit the place up, and he walked away. His next fight was the Boston card. I fought Shogun that night. He was on that card uh, and I don't believe he was on the televised portion. He fought Max Holloway. If I'm wrong, he was the first fight of the night. But if I'm right, he was the undercard just before we even went to television. That was his second fight, and he was already a big star. That place was buzzing. It was in Boston. He had all these Irish fans. Connor was all, already buzzing. Where I'm going with this is when he came onto that stage that day, so it was he, myself, and Bisping on the stage, some fan asked about the business side of it. And Connor stepped forward. Connor, every other time in that Q and A, deferred to Bisping and I, and he only spoke if we looked at him. Was kind of like, "Hey, kid, go ahead." This is just where he was at in his career, right? He's very respectful. He's very nice. Oh, that's this is the way it happened, though. And he stepped forward on that question, and he goes right into his microphone, and he says, "Somebody asked him about the money," and he goes, "You don't do it for the money." He cut the guy off. He goes, "You don't do it for the money." Leave the money out of it. This is about sport. He was saying everything that I'm now telling you today I've been frustrated about. He said this is about opportunity. This is about competition. This is about putting your skills against the other guy's skills. Now, this is before, he, again, he was a star and he came, he came into everything. But that was his mindset. And that's, this is only in 2013. So we're not going back all that far. I mean, essentially in MMA, math, that was yesterday. That was four or five fights ago. So even he came from that same perspective. Everybody did. All of the greats, none of them got into it for the, for the fame or the money. They got into it for what Tony was talking about. Anyone, anywhere, anytime, I'm working my ass off, my skills versus your skills, and, and whoever wins, we accept the outcome and we walk away. But that's what the sport used to be like. And I'm just saying, as a fan, I have noticed a turn, particularly as of late. Tyron Woodley won the belt. Tyron, a, a personal friend and a friend of this show, but he did start going down that same road. Luke Rockholt did that the second he won the belt. He won the belt. We had him up on, on stage at ESPN. We were it's live the, there the night he beat Weidman. It's the factor, brother. But he started doing that same thing. We said, Luke, Nobody's who do you want next? Nobody's made the kind of money other than GSP. I, I feel like if you cut me off here, though, you're going to miss my point. The point is, so Luke Rockholt comes out. And Luke Rockholt tells us right after he beats Weidman, we say, who do you want next? He says, I want to make money. I want whoever makes the most money. What I'm saying is, and don't miss this message, I'm not saying guys shouldn't be out there trying to make money. 
I'm saying if they all beat the same drum and come out and talk about it, it gets lost. They need to create it the way that Connor did, which was anyone, anywhere, at any time. Those opportunities as a byproduct will lead you to that money. But when you come out and you tell ever it's a turnoff. It's a turn on today what Tony Ferguson just did. Tony Ferguson is going to make money because of his attitude, because of his sacrifice, because of the hard work and the hard fights and the big wins and coming out the way that he did, coming on shows like this and getting his name out there. If you think for a second, even though Tony never brought up money, that this isn't about money, you're wrong. But like the Olympians that I use that go out and get the gold medal and then figure out a way to line up the sponsors and leverage that, that's how the game is played. It's always about the money. You just never say it's about the money. And as a fan, when I keep on hearing this, it's a turnoff. I agree with you, brother. All I was saying is, is, is there's a counterfactor involved in this, and he's got so much shine, and he's made so much money, everybody is pissed off, and then everybody is immediately trying to duplicate Connor. It's like it's like the, the like Nate said after that conference. He said, "Look at all these fools trying to dress like Connor." You know, there is a Connor factor out there. Yeah, man. But uh, yeah, okay, fine, fair enough. Uh, the, the checks that Connor's getting, and, and they're big checks, but nobody knows what those actually are. I, I read this disclosed amount. Nobody actually knows how that industry is ranked. Connor would come out, and he always exaggerates his wealth. Right? He learned you that from I'm agreeing with you, right? Yeah, you, I do. You but I, I'm that not I'm sure that you're understanding you. the point. I, I, I try to explain to people all the time how to make money in this industry. But they don't get it. They, they, they miss, somewhere they miss the point. And I don't know if I'm not articulating it or if I'm not saying it clear enough or if they're just not following the blueprint. Connor stole the Floyd Mayweather gimmick to come out and talk about the money. Fair enough. It worked for somebody. Good for him. The bottom line is he is exaggerating his wealth. That happens all the time. Connor, because he was so new to the business and the industry, that was just out there playing it by the seat of his pants, and most of the time it was working out for him, even the numbers he would exaggerate when I would hear them, I would go, oh, okay, you're so new to the industry, you don't really know how it works. Even with your exaggerated, inflated numbers, you're still behind the ball on the veterans that have been through, come there and done that, just kept their mouths shut and didn't come out and talk about it. So some of these guys... Uh, fighters, to your, you, you brought up there's a Connor factor to this. There's a Connor. Well, Connor's getting this, so it's changed the game. You're falling for it the same way the other fighters are, that he's exaggerating. Yes, he's, he's doing tremendously well. He's not doing what he's claiming he's not, doing. That's a I'm marketing not you standpoint. Game. I'm telling you. Those were your exact why, words. Those were literally your exact words. I'm telling you, it's why all these guys are beating that drum. It's yeah. why all these guys are beating that drum. I, I get it. Are, do you understand the extremely simple concept See, this that I'm is, saying? See, this is the exact same I, thing. I when just you, want to know when, if you understand this. In this, this. Case, okay. in this case, I actually agree with you. I agree with you. Okay. You're mad at me for agreeing I, with you. I'm not mad. I'm not positive that you're... That's the a, condescending chill voice I, right there. I want to know if you're understanding this. Do you understand that he is exaggerating? And do you understand that when people hear it, they don't know he's exaggerating. And this is the boys in the back. These are the smart marks that are in the business. Not you, not the little old lady sitting in Iowa that, 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 that happened to come across a TV channel and saw it and is just going to believe him. These are the smart guys in the back in the business that keep falling for it. Overeem came out and talked about how Connor's saying things and fellow fighters are trying to uh, model themselves around it and they're getting it wrong. Musousi just came out and said, hey, th these aren't true. The, the, and it's not. He's marketing. Even good, with good the, for him even for doing with the that. condescending chill voice, but when you're I saying still there's a Connor, agree with you. But you're saying there's a Connor factor. I want to make sure that you understand that that factor, though, is marketing, is exaggerated, is not accurate information. And okay. the guys in the business... The guys that are supposed to be smart, that are side by side with him in the back behind the curtain, are falling for it. And it's it's not true. It's just not true. Okay. Do you understand that? 
What do, what do you want me to say here? I, I want to know if you understand. If you were to grab somebody and, and, and manage their, their MMA career, do you know how it works? It's shocking to me how many people in this space don't know how MMA works. It's infuriating to me to listen to guys who want to make money come out and show what they're trying to do, which is make money. It's like a guy who's taking a girl on a date. You don't need to show her your hand beforehand. Buy her dinner. Treat her nice. I'm going to finish my thought right there. In fact, I'm not going to finish that. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes there's something bigger going on. Hey, look at this hand so you don't see what this hand is doing. Right, if I, you I'm, want the money, you don't come out and say, I want the money. Yes, you go I've out and you do the you. damn hard work, and the money is a byproduct. I'm, I'm not sure you now. do understand I, I think that. I'm confused. Because I don't think you get it. And I'm not turning on you. It's like nobody in this space seems to get it. And I don't think that you're above it. I think you're the same as everybody else that listens to this or listens to Connor, listens to these other guys. I've heard managers go in, and I scratch my head and go, hey, do you guys not talk to each other? Do you guys really not know how this is ran? Do you really not know what to ask for? When you're in these meetings, do you really not know how the, the ratings work and the pay-per-view buys work? Do you really not know how to negotiate with the sponsors? Do you not understand that these have to be Alaska and they have to move as the target moves and as the, as the pay-per-view buys come in or the, or the TV rating buys come in? Do you not understand what carve-outs are and equal nations clauses are? Do you not even understand this language to go out and speak it? As I'm, st- as I'm sitting here with you and I'm not yelling at you, just towards you. Sounds like it. But I don't think you know either. I think you come on with your opinion a lot of times and say it like uh, like it should be right, and I scratch my head sometimes and go, bro, you're sitting side by side with the biggest brain this industry's ever seen, and I, t- I reveal the curtain for you. I do a lot of it on this show, but there's a lot of things that I can't say because we're doing a show. I reveal them to you in our private life, and you come on here and say something that makes it sound like I'm not positive you get it. But there's not many people who do, and I swear I'm not yelling at you. I'm just yelling towards you. I'm just yelling in your direction. But there's not very many people that understand how this actually works. I kind of feel like Hillary right now in the debate. I just, I, 